The Tudor dynasty's youngest line is not one to be forgotten. I've recreated almost all of the Tudors so far except Mary Tudor, Henry's youngest sister, called a nymph from heaven, and her granddaughter, Lady Jane Grey, the famous Nine Days Queen. In this video, we will transform the two to see how they might have looked in real life, and as always, see what their deal was. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. Let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. Mary Tudor was born in 1496 and was Henry VIII's youngest sister. Out of the three, Margaret, Henry, and Mary, Mary would be the first to die in 1533, aged 37, then Margaret, then Henry. Mary was also the grandmother to Lady Jane Grey, the Nine Days Queen, which we will cover in this video, so stay tuned to the end for that. Mary was considered very beautiful. Her eyes and her eyebrows were not too bright, she was very graceful and had good manners. She was a paradise, a nymph from heaven, they said. She loved music, listening to it and dancing to it, and she could never sit still, and even when she met her future husband for the first time, she got up and blew him a kiss. Her first marriage was when she was 18 to 52-year-old King Louis XII of France. It was intended to be a state marriage for a peace treaty, and also at this point her brother was on the throne since their father died five years earlier. Mary wasn't exactly too pleased to marry the French king because she was in love with another man. Mary would thus become Queen of France, but it wouldn't last too long since her husband would die in less than three months after their marriage, so Mary would then become a Queen Dowager. They would have no children together. So, she returns to England and wants to marry her lover, Charles Brandon, the first Duke of Suffolk. Henry and his council didn't want her to marry him because he was already very powerful and marrying the sister of the king would make him even more. Long story short, they did get married but in secret. Then Henry found out and he was really upset at this because marrying the king's sister without permission was considered treason by death. But because Mary and Henry were so close, she was spared, and eventually, Henry was convinced to also spare Charles. Instead, the couple just got a huge fine. But then everything was good, and she married him for real, and they popped out four kids. Two boys and two girls. Only the two girls would survive, though. Mary, in the end, was just a simple girl wanting to find love. And she did. For 18 years, she was married. Mary, unfortunately, was fragile all her life and passed away aged 37 in 1533. Her husband would outlive her by another 12 years. Her two daughters would go on to have families of their own, and it's their eldest daughter, Frances, that would give birth to Lady Jane Grey, the future Nine Days Queen. Lady Jane Grey was born in 1437. Despite being four years younger than Queen Elizabeth I, it was her mother, Frances Grey, who was Elizabeth's first cousin, being similar in age to Elizabeth's older sister Mary or Bloody Mary. The reason for this is that Elizabeth was born so late, and so that's why all her first cousins were much older than her and around Mary's age instead, resulting in all of her first cousins' kids to be the Queen Elizabeth's age. Jane was the eldest of the three daughters of her parents. She once complained of their strict upbringing, which leads historians to believe that her parents were harsh on her. Another theory is that her mother Frances really wanted a boy, and so tried to manifest Jane into a version of her will. When she was 16-17, she became Queen of England, succeeding her first cousin once removed King Edward VI, Henry VIII's only legitimate son. The reason she became queen was because Henry VIII's will stated that if his kids don't have any heirs, the crown will go to his younger sister Mary Tudor's kids. Henry skipped his older sister Margaret Tudor's line because she married the Scottish king and he didn't want the Scots to be on the throne. And he skipped Jane's mother Frances for unknown reasons, so that leaves Jane. Technically, upon Edward's death, his two sisters Lady Mary and Lady Elizabeth would get the throne. But Edward, you see, made his own will and made Jane his heir. This is because Jane was Protestant and his older sister Lady Mary, who was the current heir presumptive, was Catholic. 
He didn't want England to go back to Catholicism and that's why he ignored his older sister Lady Mary and jumped a few steps straight to Jane. In May of 1553, she got married and in July she became queen. She was married to Lord Guilford Dudley whose father was the man in control of the late King Edward VI. That man, the Duke of Northumberland, basically had all the power with Edward and wanted to continue his power. So he manifested the next heir by having his son marry Jane and making Jane queen. Jane's father, the Duke of Suffolk, allied with Northumberland because why not power and riches and the two fathers would lead the downfall of all of them. Jane was reluctant to take the crown, she cried. Her mother had to calm her down and convince her that she was the rightful heir. So many people were pressuring her that she accepted because if she became queen then all her inner circle friends and relations would gain power. You see, Jane was the girl who preferred reading a book to hunting with the family. She was the sort of girl who hated gym class, who hated going out to family gatherings and having to make small talk with dreary relations, who spent her lunch hour hiding out in the library. She was the sort of girl who grows into a reader and often into a writer. So being queen would have been totally out of her comfort zone. And of course, this would have made her cousin, Mary, Huff and Puff, wanting to blow her house down, which you can learn why on my recreation on her. Jane is called the Nine Days Queen because she reigned for nine days. Her cousin Mary gathered an army and deposed her. Of her immediate family members for high treason, she and her husband were kept in the Tower of London and their father was released. Her father-in-law died. Her mother was spared. Queen Mary knew Jane was just a pawn and not guilty and so she just kept her under arrest. At the same time, the White Rebellion broke out which opposed Queen Mary's marriage to the Spanish King Philip II because too much Catholicism and Jane's father was clearly a part of it this time. So Queen Mary had no choice but to execute Jane's father and also Jane and also her husband because the relations were too close and the threat posed a panic. Her mother was again spared but basically ruined. Jane died in 1554, aged 16, 17, and her husband was 18, 19. It seems as though both kids were pawns of their parents and had little intent to die so young. And so that's a little bit about Henry's youngest sister's family line. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life, and I will see you in the next one.